Well, good afternoon. There we have the glaring eyeglasses again. Hi, this is Neil Palachi with the Wealth Creator Company for Women. I have my good friend up there in Washington giving me lots of hearts. He's such a good man. So, <laughs> indeed I am, indeed. So, it's so funny. So let's talk about today's subject. There's a few of you who are going to be getting on the line uh, as this goes out to Tweetland, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Google+, and the many other social networks. Again, this is Neil Palachi with the Wealth Creator, com uh, Wealth Creator Company for Women coming to you from Westlake Village, California, where it is beautiful. It is beautiful. I'm looking out my window, and it is, did I say it? Yes, I did. It is beautiful. So... As you know, these uh, periscopes that I'm doing on Mondays are five to ten minute quickies. Quickie, quickie, quickie. And uh, what you will find is that uh, if you want to watch the replay on this, it'll be on Periscope for about ooh, 24 hours. Then I will upload it to YouTube and then uh, there's also something else that my friend uh, Jack told me about. So uh, I may get it up on a uh, podcast storage system uh, so that people can go look at it on there as well. But I'll let you know all about that. Let's get right into the topic of Neil's top 10 money-saving budget busting ideas for 2016. And we will start with number one. Now, I want to tell you that if you were, in fact, to put all these into place... Uh, if they applied, of course, uh, you could save yourself, I don't know, ten or $12,000 a year. And uh, yes, drum roll, please. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's start with the most obvious. And I know that uh, you all know about this, but believe it or not, there's people that haven't refinanced their mortgage. Now, I just want to tell you that every quarter point on a mortgage every quarter point that you reduce your mortgage on a 30-year fully amortized mortgage will save you $840 annually. Now, if you were to actually keep that 30-year mortgage, obviously that's 24 grand or so, maybe 25 grand, but $840 annually, and that's just for a quarter point. Now, you do need to make sure that you're not overspending on the cost of getting the refinance done because that will reduce your overall savings. But there is definitely money to be saved and budgets to be busted in the mortgage arena. By the way, if you want to consider something more short term, uh, like a five year fixed or a seven year fixed, uh, even though interest rates right now are at about three and three quarters to three, eight, seven, five, uh, you might be able to even break 3%, but right around 3% for a five-year deal. Um, so if you're not going to be in your house very long, you may want to consider that. And you may be able to save an entire point on your mortgage, which could save you $3,360 a year on a $500,000 mortgage. Moving right along to number two, one of my favorites, and I will be very honest about this. Not that I'm dishonest about anything else, but I will be very dis, uh, very <laughs> honest about this. Uh, and that is that I haven't actually pulled the plug myself on this one. And that is the television. Yes, indeed, the television for which we all spend probably somewhere between, oh, I don't know, 80 and $125 a month. Just for the cable television part, I'm not talking about the internet and the telephone. Um, so, uh, you may want to, uh, look at that very seriously because I would say that you can save somewhere between $615 a year, uh, on your, um, uh, television by doing what? By going to Netflix or going to Roku or going to Hulu uh, which uh, are usually somewhere in the $8 a month range, you would be absolutely amazed at how much television can be purchased for $8 a month on Netflix. 
It's not quite as convenient in some cases. It doesn't quite have all the shows that you may want. For instance, if I did it, I would eliminate my Premier League soccer, which would be devastating. Anyway, I'm considering it, but I would say for many of you out there, that would be an awesome way to save maybe a grand a year. Number three, credit card transfers. Now, you really shouldn't have credit card debt to begin with at all if it's avoidable, but most of us do. On a $5,000 balance at 10%, if you were able to eliminate that credit by going to, that interest rather, by going to a 0% a card, if your credit is good enough to do that, uh, clearly you would sell uh, save yourself $500 a year. Now, I do want you to be careful about the fact that there often are transfer balance transfer fees, and those would reduce the amount of money that you're actually saving. So take a look at that. Uh, I just uh, read an email from uh, a prospective client, and she has some credit card debt at 22.9%. Now, whether or not there's anything that can be done there, and depending on what her balance is, she could be in for some serious money-saving opportunities. Number four, shopping lists. Yes, the shopping list itself will save you some money. And let me give you an example that I know many of you have done. Uh, you have walked into Costco, and you are going to buy the Costco cooked chicken along with some fruits and veggies and uh, some other grocery items that you need for dinner that night and possibly for the rest of the week. And in fact, what you walk out with is a rotisserie chicken, vegetables, fruit, and some other groceries, three t-shirts, a tennis racket, a typewriter, a typewriter, good grief, how old am I? Um, a uh, printer, and so on and so forth. So from spending $150 on your groceries, you're now spending $400. Now, I'm just going to say that you are going to spend, excuse me, you are going to save $100 per shopping trip by having a shopping list. This is at Costco specifically and possibly also at, you know, the Walmarts and so forth. Uh, I wouldn't say so much this would happen at the regular grocery store, but certainly Costco. Uh, so I would say to you, if you're going uh, every two weeks to Costco and saving $100, that is, uh, uh, I don't know, 2600 bucks that you would save. But I think somewhere between 1000 and $2,000 a year could be saved on taking a shopping list to Costco. If you want more tips about that, let me know because my wife is fantastic at doing that, which is why I don't have a Costco credit card. No, I'm just kidding. No, actually, I'm not kidding, but we'll get into that. That's a whole nother story we'll get into at another time. Number five, um, the coupons. Uh, by the way, uh, somebody mentioned to me that my uh, mouth is not quite in sync with my voice. Um, I'm looking at myself and it is perfectly in sync. So it's, you know, internet connections are tough to gauge. So I would say Neil in particular, I'm talking to Neil, my friend Neil in Washington, get over it. Okay, moving right along, uh, we have the, let's see, we have coupons. Now, I actually speak to clients who will say to me, I will not use coupons. I am not going to a restaurant and using a two-for-one. I am not going to uh, do the, uh, you know what, the $5 discount. Uh, I'm sorry that you're having trouble with the streaming. I don't know why it seems perfectly clear on my end, so my apologies. The coupons, though, are very, very valuable. Now, look. I have been into conferences where I've given presentations, and I will take one hundred one dollar <laughs> bills. I'm sorry, I just somebody just tell, somebody just sent me a message saying that I look like one of those old Japanese uh, Godzilla movies. Uh, I guess my is that better? Okay, 
Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I, you know, internet, as I said, it, it can be awfully uh, odd. So we'll just have to deal with it at the moment. Uh, but let me get into the coupons. Um, I went into a presentation at one point and threw up in the air $101 bills. What do you think happened? Yes, correct. The audience uh, dashed toward these $101 bills to get as many of the $1 bills as they could. Now, what's interesting to me is that the person with the most money managed to get $12. 12 Now, I'm not saying that it's not nice to get $12. I'm just saying that when you go for a two-for-one at your local uh, restaurant and you have a $12 free lunch or dinner, what the heck is wrong with that? So I would say to you, get the coupons, get the Groupons, and get the Caneo deals and whatever deals you have in your city and use them. Now, the one thing I will say is that you want to make sure that you are buying, getting coupons and buying Groupons and so forth for those things that you're going to do anyway. In other words, this is not your time to start buying things because you're getting a discount, but rather buying things that you are already going to buy at a discount. Okay, good. Now, number six, cell or mobile phone, for those of you who are in England, Australia, or New Zealand. Mobile phones or cell phones. Now, there is money to be saved here, folks. Uh, I want to tell you that all the biggies change their plans, like you and I change our bedsheets. Uh, whether it is a Verizon, Sprint, AT&T, uh, you will find that there are better deals in 90 days than there is today. Now, the deals also change. So, for instance, one of the tricky, sticky things that Verizon has done is... They've eliminated the get a free phone for your plan idea, reduced the costs dramatically, in my opinion. I've reduced mine by about $60 a month. Uh, but now, if you want to get a phone, they'll do a phone on a monthly plan. So for $20 a month, you can have a brand new, up-to-date, spanking brand new phone. Don't do it. Now, the reason you ought not do it is essentially because you are paying full retail for that phone. Why would you pay full retail for a phone? Now, some people will say to me, well, because I can pay $20 a month to get a brand new phone. True. And I don't pay any interest. True. But let's say that that $500 phone can be bought on the internet for $300 in essence, you overpaid for the phone by $200. Not a good deal. So I would say to you, look at the phone service and get the best deal that you can. Check it every 90 days and do not buy the monthly phone from the phone company. Jump on the internet and get yourself a deal. Number seven, eliminate your home phone. A small one, but necessarily uh, is it necessary to get rid of well it depends sometimes you've got a bundle of your internet and your cable and your telephone and it's almost free but if you do in fact get rid of your cable you won't really have a bundled plan therefore you want to get your internet as cheap as possible and to pay twenty dollars a month to have a home phone is probably not necessary some people say well i want to have a landline uh, however most of the home phones these days are not landlines, they are VoIP, voice overlay protocol, whatever the I stands for, I, I don't remember. So I know, uh, as one of my friends said, it is important because of the kids at home, uh, but a lot of the, uh, a lot of the uh, families that I know have cell phones all the way around they have cell phones for the kids so but yeah if the kids don't have a phone at all then there needs to be a phone at home wow. but i even find uh, adults who are now living at home without kids kids have gone off and they still have a home phone as well as two cell phones it generally isn't necessary but listen that's a very personal thing 
that's just my opinion and there are also uh, there are also uh, other opportunities uh, magic jack and vonage and so on and so forth and yes Neil you could sell the kids number eight life insurance uh, life insurance premiums have decreased quite dramatically over the past 10 years even over the past few years and if you have not reviewed your, and this is particularly for term life insurance, but if you have not reviewed your term life insurance over the past few years, you might find uh, that there is some significant money to be saved in that arena. Why is life insurance less expensive when all other insurance is essentially going up? Auto, home, uh, uh business insurance, medical, long-term care, disability, all rising, but life insurance costs are reducing. Why? Because we're living longer and life insurance premiums are based upon mortality rates. Given we're living longer, the insurance company has longer to collect premiums from you, therefore the annual charges can be less. There could be hundreds of dollars, if not thousands, saved on your term life insurance. So just take a look at that, give your agent a call and find out whether there's money to be saved. Number nine, gas. Gasoline, gas in your automobile. Now, of course, if you have an electric vehicle, then you're in great shape. But for those of us who are still driving around in gas-powered cars, there's about two to five dollars a week to be saved. And, you know, people, oh, two to five dollars a week. Well, I look, a hundred to two hundred and fifty dollars a year is significant. Obviously, you can <laughs> not do it, but I think it's worth it. And again, I give you the example of my throwing up the hundred one dollar bills in a room of people, and the top person collected twelve bucks. So obviously, you do care about money for the most part, but we don't often see it when we're using credit cards or debit cards. Uh, we don't think about it when it's two cents and three cents and four cents a gallon. But it all adds up, and I think it should be saved and kept by you and for your kids rather than given to oil companies. Last but not least, number 10, car leases. Now, car leases can be phenomenal, and they can also be the biggest ripoff on the face of the earth. And I don't mean to say that there are car folks ripping you off, but rather if you don't know what you're doing in a car lease, they can be very, very expensive. So you want to know what the formula is, and essentially uh, what you're going to be told is that there is a factor that is included in the calculation of the car payment on a car lease. If you multiply that factor by 2,400, and usually that factor is 0 0.042976 or some ridiculous de small decimal number, uh, you will find that if you multiply that by 2,400, uh, you will be able to know at that point the approximate equivalent interest rate that's being applied to your car lease. Keep in mind that a car lease and car leasing is simply another way to finance, another way to buy a car. You are paying interest, you are paying charges for the use of the money that is being used to buy that car, to make those payments. It's just calculated differently and it is only calculated on the portion of the car that is depreciating. So it can be complex, but there is tons of money to be saved on a car lease that is done right. Now I have all of these written down on a nice piece of paper which I'm happy um, to send to you if you would like it. Uh, so if you email me at neil at the wealth creator company dot com neil at the wealth creator company dot com or if you Register on my website at thewealthcreatorcompany.com. I'll send you weekly tips and so forth. I'll also send you Neil's top 10 money-saving, budget-busting ideas for 2016. I do thank you for being on the line on this lovely Monday afternoon in Southern California. Uh, you are um, 
allowed apparently to look at this for 24 hours, as I said, on Periscope, and then it'll be on YouTube. And I am here to help you with anything money-related that you may need. This is Neil Palachi with the Wealth Creator Company for Women. Have a great evening.